Good morning, children. I am going to take science for seventh standard today. So the first lesson we saw about the measurement, and the second lesson is reproduction and modification in plants. That is in the content. If you see, this is a unit five. So lesson five: reproduction and modification in plants. Now, flowering plants have root, stem, and leaves. Flowering plants have root. stem and leaves so these are called as a vegetative vegetative organs so they are called as a vegetative organs so what is this called as a vegetative organs now flowers fruits and seeds flowers fruits and seeds are called as a reproductive organs fruits and seeds are called as a reproductive organs so what are they called reproductive organs and we know that we have seen that new plants grow from the seeds now so what are the flowering plants children root stem and leaves are the vegetative organs and the flowers fruits and seeds are the reproductive organs now we'll see how the flower changes into a fruit and the modifications of root stem and the leaves of a plant now first what is reproduction what is reproduction now what is reproduction the process by which plants and animals produce young ones and increase their number is called as a reproduction so what is reproduction the process by which plants and animals reproduce produce young ones and increase are called as a reproduction now for example drumstick it can be grown from both seeds as well as the stem cuttings so what is example drumstick it can be grown from the seed or from the stem cuttings now what reproduction i said children the process by which plants and animals produce young ones and increase the number is called as a reproduction now that is in this you have two types sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction so what are the two types sexual and the asexual now when plants are produced from the seeds are called as a sexual reproduction and without the seeds are called as a asexual reproduction so what is a sexual so that is plants produced with the seeds and asexual is without the seed these are called as a asexual reproduction so when plants reproduce from the seeds are called as a sexual reproduction and the other ways of reproduction without the seeds are called as a asexual reproduction now first we'll see the sexual reproduction and see the sexual reproduction in this seeds are produced from the flower by the process of pollination and fertilization so how by pollination and fertilization now this is called as a sexual reproduction what is sexual reproduction seeds form from the flower by the process of pollination as well as a fertilization now to understand the how the seeds are formed from the flower first we have to see the parts of a flower So this is the part, this is the flower. Now this is a sepal, and this is petal. And if you take this, if you take this separately. See, yeah. this is a filament, and the 
and if you take this separately this is a ovary ovary stem and stigma so okay now this is a male part this is a male part of a flower and this is a female part of a flower so there is a flower children this is a sepal and this is a petal if you take this separately there is a filament and the so there is a male part of a flower and there is a female part that is this one ovule inside ovary style and stigma now let us compare few buds and open flowers of hibiscus and datura so if you see take the hibiscus flower it's a hibiscus flower it is a bud and there is a open flower open flower so if you take a bud it is green in color that is sepals you have and here in this it is bright color what color is of hibiscus red color so very bright color and it has petals so when it is in bud it is green color and only sepals are there while in the open flower this is a bud and this is a open flower so this is a open flower so when you take a bud it is green color and only sepals are there while in the open flower the flower is very bright and the petals can be seen now when it is dissected what happens it has curled petals and small tube with yellow tube lobes called the anthers and while it is see, uh, seen in the open flower it to have expanded open petals and the tube with yellow lobes called the anthers now next if you take the datura flower same way like this it's green color sepals and open flower in datura the color is white and then you have sepals and and in the open flower you have petals when this datura flower is dissected the bud is in curled same way as in hibiscus and have small yellow lobes called the anthers and the open flower the flower is expanded that is opened and the yellow lobes called the anthers can be found now in the bud we see a green color leaf like structure so it's a flower it's a bud you have a green color leaf like structure so it's a green color leaf like structure which covers the whole bud of the flower so the flower is not expanded so it covers the whole bud of a flower and this outermost layer is called a sepal that is when it is in bud it covers the whole flower which is green in color and it's a leaf like structure to see so it is called as a sepal and this has this outermost ring is called as a calyx so what it's for it's called as a calyx so once again i'll say in the bud you can see a green color leaf like structure which covers the whole flower and this is called as a sepal and the outermost ring is called as a calyx now next is the petals so if you take a flower now open flower so the petals are four so these are the petals so in the open flower the petals are the largest part of the flower and they are attractive and brightly colored also it's when to see it is very attractive to see so sometimes they are sweet scented and attracts the insects and so the ring of petals together is called as a corolla so this is a first whorl and this is a second whorl okay children so calyx is a first whorl and we take the petals and fully it's called as a and the ring of it it's called as a corolla then inside corolla the hibiscus we can see long type of stamens so i said many stamens are found in hibiscus but in datura there are only five tubes okay so when we see this ring is called as a andrecium that is male part male part is called as a andrecium they have long stamens called it 
and it is called as a antrecium male part then you have two parts of an called this as a stamen you have two parts as i already said here so stalk like filament and the lobe called the anther so what are the two parts filament and the anther so once again tell you all this is a filament and this is a anther so it's a male part called as a antrecium and then if you take this anther inside that you have a powdery substance so the powder if you touch it you have a powdery substance called the pollen grains so inside the anther when you touch it you find that a powdery substance inside small small so it is called as a pollen grains that is a male reproductive part this is only is a male reproductive part so already i told you also inside that you have many stamens and in that stamens you have it's a male part called the antrecium and in the two parts you have in that stamen filament and the anther now if you take that anther you have inside a powdery substance called the pollen grains then it is called as a female reproductive part then inside antrecium we can find female reproductive part of a flower that is called as a gynecium so this is called as a gynecium so inside the male reproductive part we can find a female it is called as a gynecium and in this part we'll see down as a swollen part so this is a ovary okay this is called as a ovary it's very swollen and this is called as ovary and seeds are found inside these parts what do they see can feel seeds inside this part and on the top there is a slender tube like structure called the style and the sticky part called the stigma do you understand children so you have on top of this there is a slender tube like structure called the style and the sticky part is called as a stigma so what is the function of the stigma the pollen grains are received in by the stigma so pollen grains pollen grains are received by the stigma so how do they receive this is so this is a flower i said this is a here inside you have a pollen grains and the pollen grains are received by the stigma so this is a stigma and the pollen grains are received by the stigma then next types there is a fourth whorl of a flower that is pistil pistil is a this is pistil there is a fourth whorl of a flower and this is a stamen this is a third whorl of a flower so first whorl is calyx second is corolla third is what is the third one stamen and the fourth whorl is a pistil so these are the four whorls in a flower now flowers can be divided into two types flowers can be divided into two types that is complete flower and a incomplete flower flower is divided into complete flower and incomplete flower okay first if we take the complete flower here if all the four whorls like what are the four whorls i said calyx corolla stamen and the pistil if all the four whorls are present it is called as a complete flower that is four whorls calyx corolla stamen and the pistil so these are the four whorls if all the four whorls are present they are called as a complete flower or the bisexual flower so this is otherwise called as a bisexual of incomplete 
that is if any of one is absent so there are four worlds if any one is also absent it is called as a incomplete flower that is if any one is missing or if calyx is missing or corolla is missing this is called as a incomplete flower that is any one of the world is missing it is called as a incomplete flower and it is called also as a unisexual flower it is called as a unisexual flower why unisexual flower that is unisexual flower are of two types that is male and female unisexual male and female flower so unisexual means male and female now the flower with andrisium andrisium means what i said male part the flower with the andrisium and without the gynesium without the female it is called as a male flower and if gynesium is present that is female is present without the male that is andrisium this is called as a female flower so what is it complete and incomplete complete is if you have all the four worlds they are called as a bisexual and incomplete if any one is missing from this four worlds it's called as a incomplete and they are called as also as a unisexual and unisexual are also of the two types that is male and female flower that is if andrisium is present without the gynesium that's called as a male flower and if gynesium is present without the female is called male is called as a female flower now this is a diagram of a bisexual flower so it's a bisexual that is both male and female is present so both all the worlds that is calyx corolla stamen and pistil all the four worlds are present they are called as a bisexual and this is unisexual that is incomplete flower so this is without the stamen and without the stamen so one whorl is not there so one whorl is missing so it is a unisexual flower so so what did you all we learn now children we learned about the flower okay flower in that what we saw we saw the petal then sepal we saw this is a sepal and this is a petal so petal which attracts insects and birds for pollination and sepal which holds the developing flower bud what is the what is the function of the sepal it holds the young developing flower bud then flower flower is a reproductive organ of a plant so what is the flower what is the function of the flower it is a reproductive organ of a plant then we saw the stamen stamen is a male part of a flower that produces the pollen grains so it's a male part of the flower that produces the pollen grains then the pistil this is a pistil it has a female part of the flower which contains ovary style and stigma then so we'll continue in the next class student thank you